welcome to the Jody Bunting podcast, where today I've got my pink swimming shorts out because we're talking cold water swimming with Zara, who is a health, fitness and body confidence coach. And here she is now. Hi, Zara. Hi, Jody. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> thank you very much. Now, I know you from a lovely Christmas dinner we shared together a couple of weeks ago uh, at the Rachel Home Supporters Group meeting. Yeah, that was great. It was lovely to meet you. And I just felt in that room, you know, your your positive energy was just fantastic. So I really felt I wanted to get you on the podcast and share you with the world. Oh, and I'm so happy that you asked me. <laughs> So tell us all about cold water swimming then. I've never done it. What is it? Okay, so it's it's going into cold water to get the, the shock that you get when you go in there. So when you kind of go in and you go, <laughs> that bit, that's the bit that we're after for the cold water swimming. And what does that do? How does that help me? Almost having a heart attack. How does that help me, Zora? <laughs> well, you do have to build up to it. So I wouldn't recommend if you've never done it to suddenly go and dive in some cold water right now. But the benefits for your health and your, your physical health and your mental health are phenomenal. It is so good for you. Um, and if you're lucky like me and you live somewhere beautiful, that just being out in nature is just it's just amazing. And you live in North Wales, don't you? So you've got the sea right on your doorstep. Yeah, I live in a little place called Slamdidna. So I've got the sea right by me and I've got all the lakes about half an hour away from me. So I am really lucky. Fantastic. So when you see a lot of these, um, you know, like wellness challenges and stuff, they always say have a cold shower or take it, go into one of these plunge pools. Is that basically what it is? Yeah. So to get the benefits, you only need to be in cold water for two minutes and if you're doing it in the shower, then you start off in increments. So you start off with a hot shower, you get cooler, 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 and then you go as cold as possible. And it could be the first day, 15 seconds. And then if you do it on a daily basis, you soon build up to that two minutes. So, so ideally it, then, to, to, to get it to its optimum, you're doing it two minutes every day, are you? Yeah. So I'm either cold water shower or I'm actually in the sea. I'm much, I don't particularly like the cold showers, but the sea I love. And I think that's just because it's nature and the, the beach has always been my happy place. So I much prefer to be in the sea than the cold shower. But the benefits are the exact same thing. And I'm very much into grounding as well. So you're also getting your grounding session in at the same time, aren't you? Yeah. And I just think being outside in nature and especially if you go with friends, you're I mean, it is a little bit crazy going like now right in the middle of the winter when it's been minus degrees. But if you're with a friend, you're sort of laughing and joking with each other because, you know, you're a little bit crazy. And then it's just the being out in nature. And yeah, it just it's I, I don't think I've ever done anything so good for my health. In it's the best thing I've ever done. And because you do a lot of stuff online, I'm guessing you've done this live and you're doing Instagram reels as you're doing it as well, are you? I actually chat. I do live videos every time I go in. And that that kind of started as an accident because I was a bit like one day I was on my own and I was like, I wonder if my phone works in here. And it did. And then that just sort of <laughs> it went from there. So I actually every time I go in and actually now because it's this cold, it helps me if I'm on my own because I'm chatting away to people. Even yes. though I'm on my own it is quite funny and I have been knocked over by the waves and gone under while I've been going live <laughs> have you got a waterproof phone yeah, and, and, a, and a waterproof case <laughs> oh that's all right then so tell us the actual logistics of it what do you do before you go out what do you do when you're there and most importantly what do you do after to warm up yeah, the, the warming up is quite important. So I went the very first time at the end of May and it was a gorgeous hot day and I was in a wetsuit. And the second time I went was in June and it was a scorching hot day, but the water was still cold. And then, so you go through the summer when it's getting warmer and then you gradually get colder in the winter, by which time you're quite used to it. But I, when I first used to go, and I used to go in really slowly, like ankles, then calves, then knees, and it took me ages to get in. Yeah. Um, and then, but now I could, because I'm so used to it, I can just walk straight in. And quite often I don't go that deep if I'm on my own. I go so deep and then I dunk under, so I submerge my shoulders. Some people do their whole head, but I don't do my head because I've just got really long hair and I just don't, don't want yeah, to. Yeah, practically it doesn't work. Yeah, but then getting out, you need to have a hot drink. Um, you need to, because when your temperature starts to drop, 
when you come out, it's still going down. It doesn't automatically, you have to oh, really? it to come back up. So you have a hot drink, you get into hot clothes really quickly. Um, and then you start to warm up. And it's like anything, once you get used to it, you warm up faster than you used to sort of a thing. But they say to drink a hot drink or eat something straight away because the eating, the digestion system starts working. So that starts heating you up from inside. And do you have one of those aqua wrap things I've seen people wear? Yeah, they're called changing robes. Um, That's it. Oh, sorry. I didn't know the official term. Yeah. So the, so the make I've got is a dry robe, which they are, I mean, they're not cheap. They're 160 pounds, but they are uh, amazing. And they're yeah. huge. So you put them on and then you take your arms up the sleeves and you can completely get dressed underneath them. But there's, they're, they're, they're warm and they're made of a material that's, um, it just protects you from all the weather. You know, like it's waterproof, but it feels like you've got this big, almost like a tent wrapped around right. you. So it sounds like and it's windproof as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. I've worn it before when I've not come out the sea and I'm boiling in it. <laughs> so preparation then, do you have a hot drink before you go? Do you wrap that thing around with you on the way or do you just go straight from bed? Uh, I kind of now, if I'm going and I'm in my house, I literally put my swimming costume on, the robe on top and then I go. And then when I get to the sea, I put on, I have wet shoes. Some girls wear like neoprene socks. So I always do my feet and my hands. I've got gloves on my hands and then a woolly hat on my head to keep the heat in the extremities. But then as soon as I get to the beach, I just whip off the dry robe and go straight in. But I do get dried and changed when I come out. Yeah. So in the summer then, when the sun's out or or basically whenever the sun's out and you feel comfortable, do you often go for a little swim as well at the same time? Yeah, yeah. in the summer, I actually swim quite a lot. This year, one of my friends was training for the Ironman. So we'd and we'd we'd go together and she'd be off swimming miles and I'd just be swimming up and down the edge of the sea because I was too scared to go too deep. <laughs> oh, I, I to be honest, I'd be the same. Yeah, and we also have, if I swim, I have a thing called the toe float. So it's like a bright balloon that you attach around your yes, waist. I've seen those. And they're really good because A, they're afloat. B, you can put your phone and keys in if you want to. They keep everything dry. And C, when people are in the sea, you can't see them. You think people can see you, but they can't. But with this bright colour, everybody can yeah. then see the pop So if you were ever in trouble... You can float on it and people could see you. So they are very, very good. Yeah, great for safety. Yeah, because you, know, you have to be <laughs> Now, when it comes to water, I'm a qualified lifeguard. I teach aqua. So I've been kind of, I'm very comfortable with water. So I'm the sort of guy that when I see water, no matter what the temperature, I just jump straight in. But I'm guessing for cold water swimming, this is not a good idea, is it? Well, it's the shock factor, isn't it? So even for me, who's used to it now, when the temperature drops, I get that. <gasps> it only yeah. lasts seconds for me. But if you've never done it and you suddenly jumped into the water, the sheer shock, and this is where you have to be careful that you don't have a heart attack because yeah. you, I mean, my mum contacted me recently because there'd been a tragedy on the news of uh, children, I think it was, falling through ice. And the, the reason why... yes. That where it was they'd passed away was because apparently because of their hearts so she yeah. was panicking about me and I'm like okay mom, I'm a fully grown adult so I'm a bigger body I go in slowly and I'm used to it so there's, there's a big difference I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend if you've never done it just to jump in and submerge because the shock yeah unless you're in an organized environment but the shock is quite big if you haven't done it <laughs> and is this a part of a club or is this are you just doing it alone I do it alone. There's clubs everywhere. One of the biggest ones is called the Blue Tits. Um, oh, and they're everywhere. I know. <laughs> Must be an Essex thing, is it, that? <laughs> uh, so, um, and every if you want to do it in your area and you went online, there'd be, there will be somebody now somewhere that goes as groups. But I tend to go on my own because... Uh, at my own timing because I'm just sort of self-employed and I think oh, I can go now yeah but I've got friends that do it and we message each other going anybody going in today so because sometimes you have to go with a high tide and things like that and do you try and go for sunrise or is it just whenever you feel like it just whenever really I try and make high tide because if I go on high tide I, I'm in the peninsula so I'm in between two seas almost um, and the, the the beautiful beach with the sand, if you don't go at high tide, the sea's gone miles out. But there is another side that the sea say, stays in quite a lot. So that's yeah. the one where I can't get there at the right time. Uh, and, and how did you get into 
the cold water <laughs> swimming. How did you get into it? challenged me I used to be the biggest wuss for cold I had my heating on from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed and it was in the lockdown a friend was doing it in Brighton and she's going you gotta do it and I was like no way she went I challenge you to do it so because she challenged me I then found some friends that were doing it um and I went in and she was like you're gonna feel like you've had five cups of coffee when you come out Anyway, I did it and then just loved it. And the feel, I can't, you have to experience it to, to experience the feeling that you get. Because when you come out, you, all your body's tingling, it's going crazy. Yeah. It, it, it is an amazing, amazing, amazing feeling. The, the closest thing I've done is that I've been in one of those plunge pools at a spa near us. And yeah. you're right, you just feel so happy to yeah. be out that cold water. So you are right, it, it's a lovely feeling. I even yeah. got that just from a, a 10 second dip that I've done before. When I first used to go in with my friend, I used to say, so I wonder why this is good for your mental health. Did you reckon it's that goddamn cold? You can't think of anything. And it, that actually is a fact. So your, your body goes into fight or flight. So whatever you've been worrying about, that is gone, do you know yeah. what I mean? Worries and, it, and stresses out the window. You can't think of anything because you're cold. All you can think of is, and if at this time of the year, you almost feel like little needles stabbing you going into into the water. I know it's it, <laughs> honestly it's amazing. <laughs> um, but everything switches off. Just yeah. your mind just clears. And apparently, because you go into the fight and flight and your adrenaline's released, it also re releases a whole load of serotonin as well in the in the brain. Fantastic. So there is a scientific fact behind it. But yeah, well, honestly. Like you said, the, the benefits are just endless on so many different levels, physical and, and mental. Meant, yeah, and it's meant to be really, really good. So the biggest killer in the in the UK now is cardiovas cardiovascular diseases. Yeah. And this really, really improves your vascular system. So our veins, our capillaries and our arteries, they have little muscles and this shocks them to move because it's got to get the cold. Our body's got to get the, the blood around our body faster. So it, it shocks them. And yeah. so our vascular system starts working much more efficiently. And so this is where the physical benefits come from. Fantastic. Mm. How did you get into fitness itself from the beginning? <laughs> well, when I hear of the fitness people and they say, oh, I got in it to help these people. And, I, and I'm like, no, I just loved, really loved music. And oh, dance me too. This is loud music. music. <laughs> and it was back in the day when it was Lycra and it was aerobics. And that's exactly because I used to go to these classes and I used to be like, I need to do this for a job. This is so yeah. much fun. That's how I got into it. <laughs> and mine was just literally a village hall that used to play bingo and all these boring things. And then once a week, the step instructor came in, really loud music, and everyone used to come out sweating. I loved yeah, it. Exactly the same. <laughs> And I still and then, say to, to people now, when I teach a class, it's literally like reliving your clubbing days because you can yeah. just turn the music up and just dance around and have fun. So the only thing when I look back and we used to wear those G-strings on top, I'm like, <laughs> like whoever invented them, you know, like women and they're conscious Whose of their idea was that? It's got to be a man's, hasn't it? Do you know what I mean? And we've got G-strings on, multicoloured, bright, luminous G-strings. All you can see is our bums. I think oh, you're right. It was some it was some sort of fitness or music video, some guy's idea to make the girls look good. <laughs> and obviously it caught on, didn't it? <laughs> right. Now, before we did this uh this uh podcast, I did look up my local uh open water swimming, and there's a place called Spring Lakes in Long Eaton, which is not far from me. So for instance, if I wanted to go along, what steps would I take as a beginner? So I would definitely, if you were going along, I would definitely, I mean, some people say you can get used to the cold by doing the shower thing. Yeah. Personally, I don't think, I think that going into submerging in cold water is a whole new ball game Very to the shower. Yeah. And you can prepare with a shower, but because I find the outdoor experience better, I wouldn't necessarily say do the shower first because that might completely put you off. Yeah. I would definitely get myself the neoprene gloves and socks to keep my um have extremities warm um and i would definitely get some kind of 
I guess if you're only going to do it once, you might not need a changing robe. I definitely would have some really warm clothes. I wear quite often um, big fluffy, you know, the big fluffy pyjama things. Oh, yeah. Because they're quite cheap and cheerful. And because if you, you know, when you get out of a swimming pool and your skin's a bit clammy and it's quite hard to get your skinny jeans on. Yeah. It's multiply that more because your skin's a bit numb as well. <laughs> so big and baggy is good. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So with regards to general fitness, um, I was going to actually ask you like fitness tips to prepare for open water. But I'm guessing open water will also work the other way and actually make you more energetic and want to get into fitness as well. Yeah, it's um, honestly the ladies that I see that do it, they're all ages, all sizes. Some have never, ever done any fitness before. Um, and they've gone in and quite a few ladies now I've seen that they've started there's some ladies I saw that started when I started and they're now doing quite a lot of swimming in the water because they've got used to it and love it. So yeah. I don't think we need a general fitness level to be able to do it. But I just would recommend that you go in slowly because obviously the shock factor to it, because you want to have the benefits without, you know, any sort of what's the right word I'm looking for. Anything going wrong, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, there's no requirement. And if you ever joined, um, like so for example the blue tits you'd see all the different ages and shapes and sizes of ladies all in their swimming costumes with woolly hats on oh sounds so <laughs> good and with regards to nutrition and food and stuff like that you said about hot drink uh beforehand is there any other tips with regard to nutrition and uh, not really you don't i mean i generally don't eat before i go in but that's just generally I don't yeah well yeah, I don't really eat before I go in, but when I come out, I do always have a hot drink. And quite a lot of the ladies that I see it, sometimes they sit around and almost like have their coffee morning after and they'll have to get the sandwiches out. <laughs> nice. So it's very social and community it's based. Very social. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But there's no nutrition requirement to be able to do it. But yeah. obviously, the healthier your nutrition, the healthier your body is as a whole, isn't it? And with regards to lifestyle, have you noticed that this helps people sleep better or anything else like that? Yeah, I definitely would would say that it would help because it, it massively de-stresses you. And so, as we know, stress causes so many problems, doesn't it? Lack of sleep, all this kind of stuff. So something that de-stresses you naturally is going to make everything about your lifestyle better. Yeah. Right. Now, on your Instagram page, you've shared something very exciting, Zora. You're <laughs> going to be on a, a BBC TV programme called Take a Hike. Tell us about this. This is oh, nothing to do with swimming, is it? Nothing to do with swimming. And it was it was just a girl that knows me on Facebook, just tagged me in like a casting call. So I messaged them and I used to send in a YouTube video and then they were like, OK, we choose you. And so it's a bit like come down with me. So it's that kind of five contestants, you all take each other, but come down with me can be a bit bitchy, can the, the narrator. Yeah, um, I think it's a Channel 4 thing, isn't it? You're on BBC now. Yeah, on BBC too. This is more about, it's, it's meant to be all about the beauty of the walks, not about you, the person and the group. Yeah. So I'm really excited and I'm, I'm, I'm in the... My my nerves on the day was like, what if I don't like the people? But we got on like a house on fire, honestly. In fact, we kept forgetting that we were on mics because you have mics attached to you all the time. Yeah. And we, we got sold off a few times. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be really interesting because I had a whole day of my just filming me about me. And then yeah. I had a whole day of my actual walk. So it's two, like 26 hours worth of filming that's going to go into, I don't know if it's a 30 minute show or an hour show, but even so you're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be very interesting to see. And then it's on for five days. So each day a contestant does their walk. We're all together for the five days. And then yeah. on the fifth day, they um, announce the winner. So who's and got the best walk, basically. What can you win? Uh, it's five hundred pound gift voucher for um, walking gear. You know, like a oh, like a walking gear shop. Yeah, so an outdoor when, shop. When's it going to be on TV? Um, so mine is on Thursday, the nineteenth of January. So it's that week. So yeah. whatever the day is. So six thirty on BBC Two. Can't Excellent. wait. <laughs> right, we will be watching. It'll be famous. <laughs> 
Right. So to finish up, can you sum your cold water tips up by giving us your top three tips for cold water swimming? Okay, so my top three tips would definitely be to prepare, and that would be wearing the the gloves and the hats and the socks so your feet are kept nice and warm. Definitely taking a hot drink with you, and the other one would be just definitely going slowly. And some ladies, when they first do it, actually go in wetsuits in the beginning to to because they get a bit scared, yeah. and it's just really take it at your own time and really listen to your body and if you get as far as your knees or as far as your hips and you're like that's enough then come back out again it's it's like anything you have to take it gradually and build it up to you like I said I went in the heat of the summer it was a boiling hot day and I was still squealing away um so yeah definitely just listen to your body wonderful right it is nearly new year so I've got to ask you this question. What are your New Year's resolutions, Aura? Okay, so my New Year's resolution is definitely to do more weight training, to definitely be doing a lot more work with weights. Um, I don't feel like I do enough. I, I do quite a lot of exercise, but I definitely want to just get a bit stronger, a bit more toned, really. So definitely. This, this was kind of the discussion actually around our dinner table, wasn't it? A few weeks yeah. ago, everybody yeah. was talking about strength training. Yeah, definitely. Because I do, I do do things like I do my legs, tums, and bums class, and I run, and I so I do do a lot of things, but I don't do a lot of you know weights and you know heavy weight. I do when I yeah, because I do a lot from my house, and so my heavy weights are only up to like nine kilos, really. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, in the new year, I think I'm going to join a gym and I'm going to make sure I go and do at least two all over body sessions for myself, really, without it being in front of a class teaching others. Because it's I very can't... different, isn't it, teaching to actually having a personal workout that benefits yeah. you. And I realised that last year that I actually um, sky, you know, when we went online, I realised how much I sky on the push ups and tricep dips bit. Because oh. I started doing them all by myself. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I must stop and stand up and count at this point. <laughs> you know, this is why sometimes I do one of my treks and one of my classes is a plank. Because doing a plank is just all you, you have to go around and check posture, don't you, Zara? <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to get a bit, a bit more disciplined with my own fitness routine because a lot of my fitness routines revolve around what I'm teaching others yeah so actually do and I used to do and up until lockdown I done pole dancing since the age of 35 I'm 52 now and then I stopped in lockdown so it was impossible online or I found it impossible anyway and I now realize I've lost all my strength yeah. to launch my body around the pole so I'm actually going to get into that again because it's just it is, I've actually I've done it before and it's so amazingly good for your body because it's all about upper body power and strength and your core, isn't it? Yeah. And the other thing that I've lost is the pain threshold. So you're, you know, when your skin is sticking and it's rubbing, yeah. you get to a point where it doesn't hurt anymore and now it kills. So I'm going to do it for me now. I'm not going to teach any lessons. It's going to be a little hobby that's just for me yeah. to get on. Oh, that sounds so, great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. So where can people find you on social media if they want to know more about swimming? What is the details? OK, so um, it's just my name, really, Zara Groves. If you type that into any of the searches, I will come up. So YouTube, Instagram, they're all Instagram's I am Zara Groves, but everything else is just Zara Groves. And you even have an online fitness community as well, don't you? What's that called? Yeah, so online fitness membership. So I teach lots of classes, a bit like yourself, really. Teach lots of classes. I've got a new instructor coming in in the new year. So she's going to bring yoga to my timetable because I don't do yoga. Um, yeah, no, I'm quite excited. So she's bringing yin yoga. So it's nothing like what I do. Yeah. So she's doing one session a month for me to add to the on-demand membership. So that's quite exciting. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Wonderful. Right. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us. I will let you know how Spring Lakes go. Maybe this is my New Year's resolution to take the dip. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, and take lots of pictures. <laughs> I will. Right. Thank you so much for your advice. Um, well, thank you for having me. And uh, Happy New Year.
Happy New Year to you too. Thank you. <laughs> bye, Zora. Bye. 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 Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.